What's up everyone and welcome to another Rust electrical tutorial. I'm Austin and today we're going to be talking about power sharing version two of my multiple systems one battery. Uh, I was recently talking to someone and they pointed out a pretty serious problem with the first version here where the active usage on the battery is reflective of both sides of the memory cell so it's not really separating the two uh, from each other. So you'll notice here, I've got this one set to 20. This would be like the primary side, your base side, whatever. And I got this one set to 60. This would be like the turrets you want to power for a minute, but no matter what side of the memory cell you're on in version one, it still registers all of it. So I've got an active usage of 83, which is the 20 plus the 60 plus the three rest Watts and switches I've got. And so if I set this to exclude me, there it goes. It detected being swapped over to the 60 side. Uh, and it still says 83. So that's the issue. And this is what, uh, version two, is going to uh, going to fix. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to just do a demonstration of version two just to show you uh, how it uh, corrects this problem. Uh, I got a battery that this is running off of right now. It has an active usage of 30. Notice that on this side of this, the version two, I've got this set to 25. The actual circuit itself requires five rust watts to run, so we've got uh, 25 here plus the five gives you the active usage of 30 over there. This side over here is set to 75, which it is not currently registering. So that's the important thing. So if I swap this, I'm just going to swap to the output side or the, you know, this is the primary side. This is the secondary side. If I swap to the secondary side, uh, now we have that 75 rust watt branch out setting. And you'll notice that the active usage now says 80. And that's what you would expect because it's the 75 plus the five that I said is part of the build and you have 80. So if I were to swap back, over here, now we're back to the primary side. Now it says 30. And so the big difference here between this version and the other version is that in version two, uh, the the active usage draw on the battery is now specific to the side. And that's because of these two blockers. We'll cover that when we build it. Uh, but now you can, uh, essentially the idea here is that you can have charging. So in this case, I've got the idea is that this thing is only getting two solar panels worth of stuff. Uh, because if it were 30 most of the time, then you wouldn't need more than uh, 30 divided by 0.8 is 37.5. Uh, round to 38, so call it 40. That's literally just enough to keep it trickle charging uh, when it is in the primary mode. And so this thing is hovering around its its maximum value because it's been in this 30 mode or the 30 side for, for most of the time. Uh, so if I swap this over, you'll notice it goes to the 75 side. So we have an, an 80 active usage and now we start to lose time, but we have five hours, you know, six hours with that 40. Um, so this would be like the turrets kicking on, uh, and you know, you could set this for how we're, we're going to talk about a timer version of this, but basically this is like defensive mode, all the turrets turn on, but when it's done, it swaps back over to primary. Now you only have a draw, a much smaller draw for your lights, your furnaces, whatever you're doing, uh, and you can charge off that. So the idea being that you can hide, you can have two or three solar panels on say a solo base, but you can have much more stuff. Uh, that the Raider wouldn't expect to encounter if they tried to take on your base. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and just build it. I've got a power bank over here. I will link that if, for those of you who would like to know more about why I use this. Uh, but other than that, I've just got from that power bank, 40 rust watts coming into the battery to simulate, like I said, the two solar panels. And then the output of that battery is running to the memory cell right here. Uh, it has two banks to it, the inverted output side, which is the primary side. Uh, and this is the side that is like the lower, lower load requirement side, just the general base stuff, lights, whatever. And then the output side, which is the secondary side, or in this case is the like defensive side, all the extra turrets and stuff that you don't want to have to try and charge for. And so it's uh, the green side here is just the inverted output to a power in on the blocker. Um, and then it's power outs running to a branch. Uh, the branch out of each side specifically goes to the blocker on the opposite side. So this branch out is running to the block pass through on the blue side. Uh, and then this power out from this branch, switch is going to run to the power in of this branch, switch, which is then set to 25 to mock the things that I was talking about when we I did the demonstration. So uh, this point here is the base power out. So you have 95 rust watts available to you uh, to use however you want. That's why I put this branch here to signify the beginning of your power tree or your power system, whatever. But you've got 95 uh, rust watts at starting here. Uh, same thing for the blue side or the secondary side. It is uh, just from the power or the output of the memory cell to the power in of this this blocker, its power out is running to the branch above it, like the other side. And then just like the other side, the branch out 
route runs to the opposite blockers block pass through. I just have it running behind that to this block pass through. And then the power out on this side is the exact same. So if I swap this over to the secondary side, it's still 95 rust watts available. And you can do as you please here. I, I mocked up 75 rust watts of use just to signify, you know, just to sort of uh, signify uh, turrets or whatever. Uh, and so that's literally it. That's all you have to do. I'm using a switch here or a, a button, excuse me, to toggle between the two states of the memory cell just for uh, demonstration purposes, uh, but you would use these set inputs more commonly and like, you could use this if you want it, but if you want it to be triggered, say automatically, you know, the, the reset input here uh, is, is associated with the inverted output and the set input is associated with the output. Uh, so depending, you know, to set it to this mode, you would hook an HBHF sensor here, say, uh, or if you wanted to reset it back to the inverted, you could run a button, whatever you want. So these are the two inputs that you're going to use. Um, so that's pretty Pretty much it for the build pretty simple the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do an example only in this uh, version of it i'm going to just add a hbhf sensor and a, a timer uh, to show you the applications of how you can you know apply this to your your own builds uh, on the primary side you know just like over here we've got the primary and the secondary side the primary side here i've got 20 rust watts worth of stuff which is just like four switches four lights two switches two furnaces four miscellaneous rust watts for other switches whatever and then on the right side i have 71 rust watts that make up six turrets uh, six splitters a branch and four door controllers and so the idea is to show you that you know you can with in this case just three solar panels you can maintain a standard amount of stuff and then in the moment when you need it you can have a timed duration uh, of, of defense that's only on for as long as you want it to automatically. So the actual switch here from the memory cell up um, from here and out these, the uh, inverted and the output from the memory cell, this is all exactly the same. Um, on this side, I just set it to 20 rust watts for this stuff. And on this side, I set it to 71. That would normally be 20, that would be what, 91 plus plus the, the active usage of the switches um, would have been the problem if this, was, if this was built with version one. But you can see here that we're already, we're only at 32, which is the 20 plus the 12. And that's, we have, we have more active usage because of this stuff and we'll kind of add that up. Uh, but, but it is separating it. So from, again, from the memory cell forward, everything else is the same. And all I did differently was from the output of the battery here, I ran this to a branch instead, and I set the branch out to seven, and I ran that branch out to a splitter. You could use, if you wanted, uh, two branch switches here, but because you're setting the, the power value from the branch here and it's after it, it doesn't matter if you use a splitter or two branches, that's totally your choice. Uh, and then from the bottom, we should have two coming out of each one of these. That's one extra than we need, but again, it's the same, it, doesn't, it, it won't matter. Uh, the power out number three is running up to and behind this to the reset. And so this one here is essentially keeping power to the reset to maintain this on the primary side, which is just the regular base mode or whatever you wanna call it. But this is keeping it coming out of the inverted output unless it receives input here. Uh, the power out two is running to the HBHF sensors power in and then passing one out when it detects a player and that's running to the toggle on of this timer. Uh, and then the last one is the power out number one and that's running over to the timer itself uh, to arriving one to pass and that pass is going to the power out here is going to the set input, which is what sets this to the output side uh, which is the you know defense mode or the whatever the turret mode whatever you want to call it and so i have this set to 10 seconds you of course would set this to however many however much time you want uh, in seconds uh, to have this on so if you wanted if, if you wanted this to turn on for an hour you would just set this to an hour's worth of seconds or two hours whatever you want however long it to run want it to run for when a raider gets engaged with this, uh, you would do that here. And so, uh, and that's pretty much it. The rest of it here, the 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 power out on the, on the uh, branch switch here, that runs to the memory cell, and then everything else is exactly the same that I discussed over there. And so the reason that it's, you know, and currently it's, it's saying, what, 32 active usage is because we have 20 here, you have seven here plus the five, seven plus five, uh, is 12, 12 plus 20 is 32, so there you go. So if I were to swap this over just by making this uh, exclude me, there it goes, it runs the timer, now we're on that side. You'll notice that the active usage is now 83, and so that's the, the 12 plus the 71, so that gives you 83. As soon as it swaps over, there it goes, it's now automatically swapped back to the primary side. Uh, and now we're back to 32 active usage. And so that's the important thing is that if this runs, it swaps over, 
your active usage is temporarily going to be 83, which you don't have the charging the root power for because you only have three solar panels. But you know, it's going to swap back. There we go. Now we're at 32 and the three solar panels I have totaling 60 rust watts coming in uh, is more than enough to handle 32. Again, you can always do that math, whatever it is you have on the primary side, divide it by 0.8, whatever that gives you round up if necessary and add a few just to make sure it trickle charges. So pretty, pretty simple um, to do. And that's it. So whatever it is you're doing. And, and again, the whole goal here is not to, you know, this is a way to hide what you have in the base. So if you have three solar panels on a solo base they're not going to expect you to have 71 rust watts worth of you know you're not gonna have six turrets because you can't power six turrets off of something with three unless you're doing this so what you're doing is you kind of have this reserve side that can the battery can absorb that power drain for the duration that this timer runs for and so yes it's at 83 you know active usage right now while on that side but as soon as it swaps back over it's going to kick back over to whatever the primary side is in this case which is 32 there it goes right there and now we're back on the primary side and so you know a couple of notes about this whatever you're trying to do over here like so in this case it's 71 rust watts you've got to have a battery that can output whatever you want here so in this case with 71 rust watts i have to use a large battery i'm charging based on a lower active usage because my primary you know standard everyday base stuff is only 20 rust watts plus the 12 so 32 active usage so i don't need that much to charge that uh, but whatever your your secondary or defense mode or whatever basically whatever you're putting out the output side of the memory cell that battery has to be able to put that out so if it's 50 or less, you can do a medium battery. If it's over 50, you're gonna have to do a large battery and then just charge it based on its active usage on this side here. So, so that folks is just about all I got. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below. Otherwise you can get me on my discord. See you later.